What's up, ladies and gentlemen and OIT family? Thank you so much for joining us again on this latest episode of Partner First. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about something that is near and dear to my heart. I've long been a fan of data, data, however you want to describe it, or however you want to pronounce it. Either way, it's important. It's vital to your business. Um, and we've had dashboards, we've had reports, we've had metrics. I think since the very first month of the very first uh, of when I launched my MSP, um, every business I've ever had, we've had analytics around it. Um, I could not have been, I could not have survived this long without those metrics. I absolutely hold them uh, as one of the keys to the successes uh, we've been able to create as a company um, through the years. And today we're going to show you how to get those exact same metrics, how, that exact same data for you. Um, so just really quick, this is going to be a, as always, this is an interactive conversation. I want you to, you know, bring up any questions, any comments, um, if you have experience with Cognition 360, um, anything like that. Um, we definitely want you to go ahead and put in the chat. Also, go ahead and uh, this is going to be recorded. So immediately afterward, it'll be live on YouTube and Facebook and LinkedIn to replay if you can't join us live. Uh, and even if you join us after the fact, please go ahead and comment. We will respond back. Um, so without much further ado, I'm happy to be joined by Christy uh, Perez and Aaron Kennedy of Cognition 360. How are you guys doing today? Great. Thanks for having us, Ray. Yeah. Yeah. We're so good to be, so good to be here. Awesome. Uh, Christy, why don't you tell us first about uh, yourself, your role at Cognition 360, and uh, how long you've been with them? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Christy Perez. I am the Partner Success Manager here at Cognition 360. I've been here a little over a year now. Uh, it's been a great year. We've really grown. Uh, I think the awareness of Cognition 360 is really getting out. Had our first year at IT Nation this year um, with our partnership with Sierra Pacific. Um, I've been in the MSP space for uh, roughly 20 years now, uh, worked at three different MSPs, was a partner at my last MSP, uh, started using ConnectWise in 2005, so uh, I've been uh, around the block with uh, ConnectWise as well, was also a ConnectWise facilitator for uh, my user group. and. Uh, was always on the operational side of the MSP space. They didn't let me touch a server or anything like that, uh, but I was the one that was having to get reports out of ConnectWise. I actually met Aaron at uh, our user group, and so when I was exiting my last MSP, he said, hey, I need you to look at Cognition 360, and I could tell by his passion it must be something great. Um, so I did look at it uh, and was actually blown away uh, by the different types of reports that you can get at just clicks of buttons um, out of the gate. It was it's it's pretty impressive stuff. So that's uh, why I'm here today. I love helping MSPs grow and get that data that they need to actually run their business effectively. Awesome. And what about you, Aaron? Uh, give us some background on you and your role with Cognition. Sure. Um, so I've been doing IT when it was back in the glory days of old time and materials and there was no managed service and you could charge them. doesn't matter how bad of an MSP you were. Uh, the worse you were, the more you could bill <laughs> back in those <laughs> days. Um, and then uh, yeah, started departments of MSPs and ran MSPs and that kind of stuff. And then ultimately sold in 2016 um, the MSP where I was working at. Um, and then, I, through that whole process, I had used every sort of tool to kind of pull data out of ConnectWise or, you know, in just ability to look at any data. Um, and then I met some guys at IT Nation. I can't remember what year it was, but um, we're talking about what, what then became known as Cognition 360. Um, about this basically button you could basically press to get all this report and data ready to go. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, yeah, I, could, I know how to build all that and, you know, whatever tool or something like that. But then when you see the deep analytics and how you connect all these different data points together and can really make some real assessments. So it, it moved for me from, hey, this is not just a pretty number that I can throw up on a, a TV in the office to, oh, I can actually do something with that as an owner of an MSP. Um, to me, that was where I was just like, man, this is incredible. Um, so I got involved and then uh, took over CEO uh, early last year. So literally March 2nd of 2020, uh, about two weeks before the world shut down. And then uh, everybody goes 
home and I'm like, oh man, what did I get myself into here? Um, but that really created this demand that wasn't really there before um, for, hey, I, I've got people working remotely or I've got customers that are asking me for deferred payments and that kind of stuff. I don't know if they're profitable. I don't know how much these techs are working um, compared to other technicians and that kind of stuff because I can't physically see them all in the same office anymore. Um, so it, it worked out really well from a demand standpoint of just people needing that. So what we provide is all of those reports out of the gate. You don't have to go build and maintain your own reporting. Um, and we provide that on an ongoing basis. So it's a data warehouse type setup. So I can go back in June of 2016 and show you what this metric looked like in that month. It's pretty neat stuff. And that that's really why I, I appreciate platforms like this, um, which I think in your case, I know you have competitors. I don't, I, I think you're very unique in, in the offering um, in that, because it's not just, here's some pretty pictures, here's some pretty graphs. Right. It, it's, it's more looking at the meaningful, uh, the, uh, the meaning behind the data and, um, and we'll go into like how the onboarding process um, for those that don't know um, when I bring on vendors, thought leaders, subject matter experts onto these partner first, Every once in a while, I'll have them show me the platform, but very rarely do I get do I let the vendor have the opportunity to like give me their sales pitch. Um, I instead do the uh, do the guerrilla work of you know going and talking to their customers, um, and I have talked to many Cognition three hundred and sixty users um, who all had very glowing uh, remarks. Uh, so. Uh, and they had a lot to say about both the onboarding process and the data that they receive uh, in using the product, uh, the platform, um, which I like. And one of the things I love most about is you guys aren't selling some third party app because MSPs love tools, right? We love we love our mm -hmm. shiny trinkets and our, our anything new, right? Um, you guys are leveraging Power BI, which right. I, I've yet to meet an MSP that doesn't have access to Power BI. Mm -hmm. um, I, very few actually know how to use it, but <laughs> they have access to it. Uh, hey, and I, I count myself in that. I didn't know how to use it either. Yeah. So Okay. Uh, I don't I don't okay. feel so bad then. Yeah, I didn't um, I didn't and and it's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and that you're, you're leveraging Power BI to do what it's meant to do and um and you're using that to to provide meaningful insights. So I appreciate the background uh on on both yourself and, and the company. Um I want to ask real quick, I have my own ideas, but there are other dashboarding tools, right? There are other, um, there are other tools that, uh, that give reporting and stuff like that. I've used a handful over the years. Why Cognition 360? Why did you feel that those weren't, I don't, I'm not, not asking you to talk poorly of the others, but why did you feel there was still a need? Yeah, I, I don't think that there's a, like necessarily this is a bad product or something like that. I think they're designed with different end goals in mind. And I think if you're an MSP and you haven't kind of stepped into the world of data, if you haven't gotten your head around, Hey, there's all this data that's just sitting in there that I can pull this gold out. Um, and you're just looking at all these products. They all kind of look the same. It's like, Oh, it's a reporting tool, but I think they're specifically designed for different things. So I mean, the big one that everybody knows, I'll just go ahead and throw out there, Bright Gauge. I mean, that's that's a dashboarding specific tool. It's meant to look good to a customer. It's meant to look good on a screen, but it's very basic and very tactical. Like it's here, you got 14 tickets open that are priority one right now. You need to go do something right at this moment. But that doesn't really help me do anything in terms of steering my business. I'm not going to use that specific metric to be oh, I need to hire somebody in three months or, hey, th this thing that we're selling is not profitable or these customers over the past six months have not been profitable. Like you go try to use one of those tools to do something it wasn't intended to do and it can kind of do it, but you got to cobble it along and you got to maintain it and you still can't get all the points together because um, it's just, it, it was, wasn't designed for that. I mean, uh, Bright Gauge itself, I think the the, most you can go back is 270 days. Like I think that's hard built into their system. Um, and, and that's just not where we wanted to be like in terms of like, that wasn't the need we were, we were wanting to, to solve. It was go look at these trending metrics for a long time, these complicated things that 
even if I could go build them out, it would just take so long to do this on my own where it would, it would, it was a, why, why should I spend all this time to become like this data scientist reporting expert? I'm trying to service these customers. Um, I just wanted something easier to use. Like I don't, I don't mind playing with some data and that kind of stuff, but I don't want it to be a full-time thing. Um, so that's where the yeah, difference is. And we, when we say, here's a problem in your business and you can, daisy chain that all the way down to well I've, I've got an agreement problem or a profitability problem with this customer i can dovetail that all the way down and find out where oh it's because i'm having this problem with time entry or we they snuck a project in as a help desk ticket um and, and that will show up like automatically in our reporting so we maintain those Makes reports sense. for them like in an ongoing basis and, you know, sometimes your reporting's not right. And to, to us, that's the worst thing that can happen is you don't trust the data. So you spend all this time doing some reporting solution and it's like, well, I just don't know if that's right. And then what that means is you ultimately stop using the tool and you just go by this muscle and feel for all your decisions. And that's when it's just like, that works when you're three people, but it doesn't work when you're 30 people. Um, yeah. So you, you definitely got to get out of that mindset and get more into like the long-term trending and making sure you're steering the business in the right way. I think that muscle and feel piece that you're talking about, Aaron, is, is huge, you know, but you know, when I was trying to pull reporting out of ConnectWise or, or figure out, you know, do we need to hire or what, which agreements are we making money on? Which agreements do my account managers need to focus on or go after? Um, a lot of time it was muscle and feel. Um, these, these, these clients are noisy, but why are they noisy? Um, my engineers are saying they're busy and we need to hire, but are they truly being utilized correctly? How are they being utilized? What is their lost time? How much time are we spending in meetings? It was never an easy way and a quick way without sitting behind my desk, you know, at eight o'clock at night to, to, to kind of figure out that information. Uh, so it, with, with this reporting, you know, the data is there. The data is in ConnectWise. Sometimes we're, we're quick to tell you what you need to clean up or, or where you need to focus. But uh, it, it's, it's pretty uh, enlightening uh, to, to any client that looks at the product to see, oh, wow, yes, this is so eye-opening for me. I've seen so many things yeah. um, that I, I wasn't even aware of. Uh, and, and like Aaron said, when you get larger, you can't really go on that muscle and bill anymore. You've got to have some sort of data to, to manage and to, to be able to be more efficient. From the early days, I remember talking, you know, because you certain clients you have different relationships with and some are a little needier than others. Some are loud talkers, right? The noisy clients as as Dipple and some of the other ones call them. Um, and so what will happen is, you know, sometimes the techs would get frustrated or different teams in the company would get frustrated. Um, and I've always been a proponent. My priorities are staff first, client second everything else third. Mm -hmm. um, and so I absolutely always allowed my staff to, if there was somebody that they felt wasn't a good fit for our company, this is from day one, um, that wasn't a good fit for the company, I'd let them nominate and say, hey, put this, this client up for review. But the catch to that was, are we going off feeling or are we going off data? And so I had built dashboards uh, or I had built reports specifically so that when they identified a problem or also, you know, when a client identifies a problem, right? When something comes up, you want to see the stat the state of that client over time um, to look at what the interactions were and what the outcomes of those interactions were. And was it just, was, did we really, you know, have to invest hours upon hours of them ignoring us and giving us a hard time and whatever else over years? Or was this like a one-time thing that just caught a tech on a bad day? Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, we let the data make that decision. Um, and it's it goes a long way because, like you said, you, that memory, that understanding as a small business, you know, when we were two or three people, you know, knowing everybody it's a little, it's a lot easier, right? Usually the business owner knows everybody and they know all the clients. And then as you grow, you know, you're not really in touch with, you know, the state of the accounts and their happiness levels and, you know, what kind of interactions they're having despite, you know, whatever efforts you have. Mm -hmm. And so still being able to have a quantitative approach where you can say, okay, well, this is what we're getting. This is, these are the outcomes. These are the efforts being put in that has a lot of value as you scale up. Um, right. And it also means that you're making educated decisions at every step of the way, not just off pure emotion. Mm -hmm. So um, my uh, my grandmother used to say, um, 
before you do something, think about, are you going to have to apologize for it later? <laughs> and using the data <laughs> instead of uh, emotion helps you with that a lot. Um, so Aaron, you had Aaron, stuff to share with Aaron, you can start using us. that with me. That's, a, that's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Use, use Raid's grandmother advice. <laughs> right? There you go. Uh, so Aaron, you have some stuff to share with us. Um, what do we got here? Yeah, so this is kind of just talking, uh, you know, we touched on a little bit before, but this is basically like, what is the purpose of cognition? Why do we exist? Um, so it was one of those, like, just the ability, because as we talked about before, I think ConnectWise is a great tool to put data in. So it's, there's tons of ways to get data in either directly or through some integration or something like that. It's great at gathering all that data. It's not the best at being able to pull that out. If you try to use any of the built-in stuff, I mean, uh, God bless you. It's it's a struggle. Um, I've, I've, I've done it before, and it's just one of those kind of like, I need Are to... Are you saying Report Writer is the best tool ever? I would or not I never say that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's tough. And it's one of those, like, I see people like trying to build it on a forum or something like, hey, I'm trying to build this report or something very complex where it's like, how do I pull this data in and correlate it to that and, and do all this work? And it's like, you're becoming an, an expert at writing reports, but you're the service delivery manager or you're the owner and you're trying to piece all these pieces together, but you're spending days and days just per month or, or something like that. Um, so that, that was where we kind of came out of is just, having a, a, a way where, hey, this is our solution for reporting and data warehousing and trending. And we use those reports. I mean, we, we give you just a ton of reports out of the gate. Um, and that covers all facets of the business. There's sales, project, finance. Um, what, what else? Account management. Missing? Account management, yeah. So every module that's within ConnectWise we cover in terms of reporting. And we will link all those kind of together with different reports um, within. So like one of the reports we've gotten, I might be still in Christie's Thunder a little bit later, but um, shows things like um, ticket type, subtype, and item. So if you're working on different tickets, I can go in and tell you how many open tickets you've got now based on your ticket type, subtype, and item. How long is it going to take you to finish and complete based on your averages of completing those kind of tickets before. Um, like how much labor do you need? In other words, to complete, if you had no more tickets coming in today, what would you need to close these tickets out? Uh, and so sometimes it's like, hey, you need, that's gonna take you 17 days, it's gonna take you 34 days, whatever. But it gives you an idea of your real backlog of how much staff do I actually need? Uh, now, sometimes that's, hey, we need to get more efficient at certain kinds of things or some types of tickets like subtypes or items or, um, are going to, are causing us more problems. So we can identify that every time uh, somebody works on a ticket, of course, they're putting a time entry in, Well, we're scoring that time entry, both in terms of how quickly are they putting it in? And then how much does that cost you, the owner from a salary overhead perspective to work on those, that individual ticket. So then you can see that compiled across all the tickets that you've worked on to, to say things like, Hey, in October, we spent $32,000 in that month in terms of cost on password reset tickets. So maybe we need to put in just a self-service password reset tool for our clients or for this one client that's causing a lot of problem. And then that's going to alleviate that. And then now we don't necessarily have to hire, but we can now reallocate that. And then, then you see your number go down from 34 days to 32 days or whatever. And so just constantly working at that, go try to build that on your own. And that's going to not only take you forever to build, but then you got to maintain that. So we wanted to have that solution where people could have access to that kind of trending and decision-making uh, without having to do it all on their own. And that's, that's one of the things I like best about it because, you know, as I got my dashboard tools and when I talk to other MSPs, whether it's on MSP geek or, you know, IT pool party or MRU or Reddit, um, or the Facebook groups, you know, they, they talk about dashboarding and as soon, as soon as they get the dashboarding, the question is, what should we monitor? Right? Like, right. and inevitably it's always technical. It is, mm -hmm. what is our technician utilization rates? What is our open rates, our closure rates, our touch points, our whatever. And it's always technical. 
and they miss you know whereas like you know we've always had and i'm not saying we got the answer right from the beginning i'm saying it was a long evolution but mm -hmm. you know something we we focused on was you know these metrics were important for admin finance for all the other departments right for the hr for sales for service delivery for orders for logistics being able to have these quantifiable results these metrics that we could evaluate and use to drive business decisions was just as important as knowing how many tickets tech was working per day mm -hmm. um and it's like and so you know that's that's the real problem and and i hope i'm not stealing stealing any thunder here but that's the real problem that happens when you get a lot of a lot of uh dashboarding solutions and you're right when we had uh, i was a big fan i still am a big fan of breakage but it was beautiful on the tvs we had yep. 10 or 12 tvs throughout the office awesome they had the ding every time a new ticket would come in it would drive everybody bonkers you know <laughs> but you know it was great it was it was awesome yeah but you know as far as like using it to drive for point in time it was fantastic to know what was going on at that exact moment yep. um but no we didn't use it as much we used it for some vcio we used it for some qbr stuff but to do historical data year over year or at this point in time at this time last year or whatever for comparative analysis it the tools weren't there mm -hmm. um and as good as they they're and i'm not talking about breakage specifically i mean you could say the same about any of the dashboarding solutions but like you said they're not built for that they're not built for that that analysis um and when you do it right your whole business can can benefit from it um right. versus you know just the text <laughs> not saying utilization rates are a bad thing i'm saying that's not the only thing you know yeah 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 to me that's one of those uh it, it's important to look at but that's usually not where you want to start um, I'm you, I'm looking at utilization because of another problem that I've identified somewhere else. It's not like that specific thing. Like, okay, this guy utilization rates ninety percent. Does that mean we're making money? No, that's not the first one you look at. It's definitely part of the equation, but you're gonna usually kind of start and looking at more like business type metrics. Even those service delivery managers. This is kind of what I talked about some at IT Nation is. The service managers need to understand like you you're being held to business metrics whether you know it or not so if these customers are profitable or they're not profitable even if the owner doesn't specifically know that on a granular level you're not going to be able to hire somebody else because you're going to say hey we got to hire more people because i can't get to so and so and so and so and the owner's just going to say well i don't have any money to hire more people you need to get more efficient and so they get locked in this tension where nothing really happens and uh it's just like well i guess we just got to work harder um <laughs> and it, and not it's, knowing like hey this one right. specific customer is eating us alive which you know which what we see on the data side is unfortunately it's usually that hey this customer is paying us the most of any of our customers so their top mm -hmm. line is the most it's like hey so and so put in a ticket drop everything everybody work on this customer because it's so important to keep them happy um and that's certainly true from a, a cash flow perspective obviously you want to make sure that's right but if they're not priced right they're usually going to be one of those yeah you're actually making the least amount of money on this customer you would be better off yeah, that's firing the thing them. it's yeah it's easy to miss right it's easy to look and say okay well who's my gross who's my my highest gross pro or my highest gross revenue client and yeah. That number looks great. I had clients that were twenty, thirty thousand dollars MRR, and it looked fantastic. But then I looked, and we were including a bunch of fiber circuits at fifteen hundred or three thousand dollars each, yep. where we we're making like ten percent or twelve percent. And it was like, okay, well, you know, it's a multi-location client that that pads the books really, really well. But at the end of the day, you know, being able to subdivide that out, um, you know, that's much more complicated, and it just shows you the better picture. Whereas you know, you can have a smaller client, but if you have things, they're nice, even keel, they're, you know, you have them taken care of, they're not really a burden on your support desk, they're, they have good tool adoption, good stack adoption, they're listening to your recommendations, you could easily have a high gross uh, or a high net profit from them, a high mm -hmm. markup or margin, better said, uh, on them than you would have just be, even though they're not that giant number. Right. Um, and that, that took a long time to dial in, realistically. It's it's nice to look at the big number um 
but you know what is it uh slo says uh 70 contract profitability in msp is best in class right, um right. and i used to say all the time we were at 81 percent um it, it was pretty phenomenal but it took a lot of work to get there a mm -hmm. whole ton of work whereas you talk to a lot of msps today and say okay well what's your contract profitability and they have no idea no right. clue whatsoever <laughs> so yep yeah they can tell so you so i, I want to ask you is, oh yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> right and, and it's nice seeing that when the you yeah. know, recurring <laughs> billing pops in and you know yeah. at the first of the month i know today's billing day for all the msps um <laughs> You know, it, it's nice seeing that for sure. But, you know, knowing who's your most profitable, I, I bet most, they could tell you who they feel is most profitable. But I wanted yeah. to ask you guys, and uh, I'll give you both a chance to answer this. Um, put you on the spot. If you had to pick one metric, this is the metric that the company lives or dies on. What is that metric? I'll go with, with uh, Christy first. Uh, let's see. I, I think Aaron might agree with me on this, but uh, f for me, it would it would definitely be utilization. Uh, I know that kind of what he was saying before, like utilization isn't the know all be all, but the thing about utilization is we are a service industry, and if if you don't know where your time is or what's going on with that time, you know, I, I've worked with a lot of clients and in the beginning they were just putting time in that they were working on, on, on actual client tickets. So it's like, okay, where's the other 40% of their time going? Or they weren't, they weren't tracking training. They weren't tracking meetings. They weren't tracking mentoring. Um, and, and so their engineers would say, I'm, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. But it, it, it was, if, if you don't have, it kind of all starts with all of that time going in and then it works its way from there. So to find out, you know, who is most profitable, who, what kind of tickets are we working on? All of that has to come from that utilization that's coming. Where is that all coming from? So for me, I would say key number one, it's the first thing I look at when I look at anybody's data is what does their time entry look like? How, how clean is it? How do they have their charge codes built out correctly to be able to track everything? So um, for me, I would, I would definitely go with, with utilization to then be able to see how much of that time is realized, realized being that time going towards a client. You know, are you at, you know, 100% utilization and what is your realized percentage? You know, are you at 80% realized, which is what I would, you know, feel is at that best in class number. And what do we need to get there? All right, what about you, Aaron? That's interesting. I would probably say, uh, I guess it kind of depends on what hat I've got on, but if I've, <laughs> I'm, I'm running an MSP, I'm, I'm going to be looking at my agreement profitability is probably it. So, and so that's a little bit different than customer profitability. Um, customer is going to tell me which customers are profitable. Agreement would tell me which agreement or types of agreements are most profitable. So that it really kind of steers you in. You can see that the customer lens in that as well because obviously different customers have different agreements. Um, but it really kind of helps me to, to steer the business in terms of these are the type of services that I offer that I'm most profitable in. So if my goal is profitability and I, it, you know, which really everybody's goal pretty much is to some extent, um, even if you're, you're running it as a kind of a lifestyle business and don't plan to sell or acquire anything like that, you still, everything feeds from the cash. So if I want to hire new people, I'm going to have to have, you know, better profitability. So being able to see that on an agreement level really is where that starts. But to Christy's point, you can't really look, you're not going to get good agreement profitability. It all starts with if time. You don't have your time in. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. I, every I time we clients, see that at I, the beginning. Yeah. Right. I work with clients at the beginning and, and they aren't putting time. They're not putting labor towards all inclusive agreements sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how are you going to know if you're profitable if you're not doing this? You know, they're, they're not accounting yeah. for account management sometimes. They, there's so many places where it's, well, I, I, I know I'm profitable because, you know, we, we've got our pseudo costs in there uh, of what the, the cost is going to be. But, we, you know, with Cognition, we're able to say, put all your time against that agreement. And this is what it's truly costing you based on the labor that you have set up for that member. Uh, or you get so, that MSP where the CEO is still working tickets and <laughs> they just don't, they don't put any doc, they don't yeah. document tickets at all. Right. They, they work cases, but they don't, they don't actually document anything. They just mark yeah. them closed. 
Yeah. And, or those you know, those noisy I've, clients that we love to talk about. And you're mm-hmm. you're an owner or you're an account manager, and then you you spent four hours today working on a, you know a CSAT issue, or you know if you're doing that every single week, then it's you know try to figure out how to fix it, of course. But um, sometimes it's it's kind of like you said, Ray. Some of these clients just aren't fit. Um, so let's go find clients that, that are a fit, that, that will fit into kind of our, our structure and, and have the, the core values that we want to, to, you know, work on. They don't value technology. So you're working with them all the time because they don't want to mm-hmm. update anything right. or upgrade anything. It's a constant battle. And that's, that's the thing, you know, I, I talk to, when I'm talking to MSPs, especially the ones that are the, the one person, two person, you know, three person shops where they're like, yeah, we're small. We don't need to document everything. We don't need to, you know, work tickets because they'll text me and they'll tell me what's going on. And I, I have a good idea what's going on with other clients. And my argument is, well, as a one person MSP, you have less time than I had in my MSP, right? I, I could <laughs> knock off and I could go play Call of Duty when I want. I still do that today. But, <laughs> you know, I could go knock off if I want to because I have other people doing their jobs, right? Mm-hmm. I, I consider myself backfill and I have other roles to fill. When you're the one person MSP where you're wearing all the hats, you need to be very strategic and decisive about where you spend your time. Oh, and if sure. you don't know, if you're going based off feeling, you know, that's why I see all the time, oh, well, why do we need to know these things? I'm small. It, it doesn't matter. I'm like, it matters more to you than it does to anybody else. Right. Because, you know, if I have net revenues of 10 million, $50 million, yes, I'm going to, yes, the money matters, but I have a lot more runway to make mistakes with. Yeah. If yeah, you're making right. 50 grand a, a month or you're making 20 grand a month, you have a lot less runway that when you make a mistake, something, you know, things can go south pretty quick. So knowing where the information is, is important. And then also you have the, how do you know what's going to work when you hire staff? I hate to be that guy that says, do what I say, not what I do, right? <laughs> like, don't, mm-hmm. How do you how do you know you're not being overburdensome with them and documenting tickets? And when they point back to you and say, well, you don't do it, you know, right. so it's getting the data in is probably the, the biggest battle uh, to start with, uh, I would I would imagine. Yeah, that's and that's something we hear a lot, even even the people that are really hungry for it. Um, when they get in, they see, uh, oh, well, there's, I need to make sure that all my data is right. And before I can actually start using reporting, which to me is kind of like, well, I'm going to get in shape before I buy a scale or something like that, where it's just (laughs) kind of like, that doesn't really make sense, but okay. Um, and you know how that goes. It's, you never get your data up, up to par. It's never going to happen because it's not important to you. Um, is something that's in front of your face constantly. So that's where we say start using the tool and it's going to show you the, the areas of, hey, you need some d- data cleanup in this area or you, you need to change a practice, like start having people put in time every day or in, in you know, preferably real time as much as possible, things like that. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, like, that's what, you know, we get asked a lot, well, where do we need to focus? What do we need to start with? And we're definitely able, because we look at this every single day, we're able to point out, you know, well, here's where I feel like your priorities are. Now you need to go back as a company and decide which priorities do you want to do first? Mm-hmm. Um, because it, it is overwhelming, you know, when you start, when all of a sudden you, you you don't have the data and then all of a sudden you do, it can, it can be like, oh, wow, we've got a lot of work to do. So, you know, we, we do kind of guide you. And I think that's where, um, you know, both Aaron and I and most of our team have that MSP background. We, we've been in your shoes. We understand your pains and know that you, you can't fix everything overnight. And, and you know, it's, it's that whole, like, I'm going to break this out, you know, kind of, you know, whether it's you're using traction or EOS or Rockefeller habits or whatever that that is that you're working on, you know, to prioritize this piece of the company out too, to say, you know, we're going to focus on utilization. That's number one for us this quarter. And you're going to put in, you know, different, um, uh, different ways to do that. I love gamifying. I love making everything a game. Um, uh, I also think that technicians are highly uh, com- competitive uh, and uh, gamifying oh, yeah. has always worked for me. Um, uh, but it, and, and another thing is, you know, with the reporting, you have to be sure that you're, you're not going to affect your culture. Cause it's like, oh my gosh, they're micromanaging us all of a sudden. So it's, it's really letting the team understand that, no, this is really going to help you too. This is going to let us see, Hey, when it is time to hire a help desk person, because we have these types, subtypes and items in here, we can actually see what type of person we need to hire. 
what kind of skills do they need uh, to, to be able to help the team out? Uh, so it's uh, uh, you know it's it's a way for you to you know kind of work together with the whole team, but make sure they don't realize hey they're just trying to micromanage us more. So um, we kind of work with you in that way too to say this is how you need to implement this product and and get it into your culture. I love that. And uh, before we go any further, I was asked to put on a uh, like I said I, I go back and I talk to MSPs that that use you guys. Um, who all had glowing things to say. And one of them wanted to make sure we brought up, uh, they had a reference they wanted to put up in the middle-ish uh, was his exact request. It says, Cognition 360 is amazing. And while they may not fit every company they partner with, they have met my extremely high requirements for report and data <laughs> analytics platform. And that is Kyle Spooner of uh, MSP Geek Admin. And, uh, you know, he thinks he's a future dictator. I think Jason Slagle and uh, Wes Spencer <laughs> have something to say to that. But um, one of many uh, glowing reviews I got uh, while asking about it, and actually Kyle specifically, um, he was the one that, because uh, while I talked to uh, Dustin at Clear Guidance, he was one of the ones that um, gave me nothing but awesome things to say about you guys. Um, he was actually the one that said, uh, you need to go talk to Aaron. I'm like, yes, I've seen Aaron around. He goes, no, no, you need to talk to Aaron. You have to <laughs> jump on a live stream with Aaron. Yeah. So, you know, we can uh, say thanks to Dustin for that. But um, Kyle spent uh, one of the nights out doing after a tech bar, actually. Um, we're, we usually do after shows. Um after party and he spent time showing us his uh, cognition 360 setup ah, and one of his cool. comments yeah yeah very cool um he was very excited about it too um and so and one of the things that he brought up was that it wasn't just here you go it was the fact of how you guys handled the onboarding of actually discussing the way the msp operates first and then making sure the data made sense with the way the MSP operated, right. it wasn't right. just here's some data, have fun it, because that's that's what happened. That's what happened to me. I got dashboards and I'm like, great. And then I went back to and it wasn't just Bright Gauge. I would use Connect Smart before and some other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, then me. I tried to do it myself with Clipfolio and a bunch of you know, yep. been yep. down that road. <laughs> and um, you know, and I and I sat there and I'm like, okay, cool. And then one of the first things I took to I think Eric at, at Bright Gauge, I took to him and I'm like, I need samples i need something other people are doing because i'm just looking at a blank canvas and i i have no idea what i'm doing um and to hear that you know kyle specifically said you guys actually sit there and have the conversations about the business cases because you've been in the msp space for a very long time and you understand the the needs it's a big deal you know not being that blank canvas not knowing uh what the hell do i do next <laughs> you know Yep. So we have uh, we have a demo, uh, or we have some actual demo, right, Christy? That you're going to show us of uh, the actual yeah. platform itself. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we don't we awesome. don't have a whole lot of time, but um, well, uh, I definitely yeah. would love to show you some of the reports, just kind of what they look like. I will start with what is one of my favorites uh, uh, that I kind of spoke on with team utilization. So you, this is looking at it from just a service app. So everything again is published into your Power BI into apps and then all the different reports once you go into the report there are multiple pages within that report as well that you can drill into get more data um, we're going right now i'm just looking at a service team looking at last month's data and our sample data so don't look at percentages too much they might be off a little <laughs> um, and then over on this comparison page this is a you know it's just a quick way for you to come in here and see you know what what time was entered for last month, what was my utilization? So we're gonna look at your available hours based on what is set up in ConnectWise. We're gonna pull out PTO to then see, here's my true staff available hours. How much of that time was utilized? For Cognition, it's how much of that time was put onto the timesheet. So we're not even gonna give you a green unless you're at 100%. And then out of that utilized time, how much went to a client? And this is where you really start getting to the meat. So if you can get all your time in and then see how much of that time is actually spent on client time, you can then really start getting into the metrics and figuring out, you know, your profitability. It's like all my people are busy, but what are they doing? Um, I really love this one for billable realized per day. Um, I like to see that number at about six, um, six hours billable, especially for those, you know, true tier one, tier two, tier three help desk um, engineers. You know, are they getting at that six hour mark? Um, also going to be able to show you some other stuff like, you know, what is my non-business time? 
um, and any of the data you can drill into. So if someone has like a large do not bill, you can drill directly into any data that you want to look at, you know, right here. Look at it quickly, be able to drill into you back into your ConnectWise. So everything will have URLs going directly back into your ConnectWise. So I can see all this do not build time is charge code, all admin, um, which would put me into another report. So it's kind of like that chain effect that, that Aaron was talking about. It's like, oh, wow, this person was, you know, had a lot of time in, but not a whole lot of billable time. What, what happened? Um, so that would put you onto, you know, another report to see that information. Um, it's something the one I that like Aaron was talking quick. about. Um, yeah, you have you have total available uh, total available utilization, right? Like, you know, that's a big deal because a lot of when you talk about capacity planning, when you talk about new hires, and when is the point to start hiring? Knowing what yes. you, what capacity you have, right? Like every MSP in the world can tell you, oh, yesterday was a bad day. We had a ton of tickets. Yes, the tomorrow was, yeah. or the day before was easier, but. You know, to sit there and know, okay, well, the Monday after Thanksgiving weekend, we're going to be slammed every single time. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what I mean? To this have this that number will be back. higher on that week because we're playing catch up. Uh, but, you know, right. it's a good way to, but you can see trends that way. So, like, what I say is, mm -hmm. you know, like, what, 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 who are my engineers that are working? You know, when I see this number get to about seven and it starts trending up for any particular engineer, I'm like, hey, you need to start watching that person. They don't have time for anything else. They don't have time to train. They don't have time to do meetings. There's there's nothing else. Um, uh, and if your whole team starts getting that way, it lets you know. I, I told one of our, our, our partners one time, he still laughs at me. So I'm an IT nation and I was like, Hey, you're, you're running a little hot. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and he didn't, he, he knew his team was working hard and he was a stickler for those KPIs and everything. But I was like, you know, it, it, it's, it's getting to a point to where you might want to look at, at, at hiring somebody for that team. Cause you know, you can do reviews and you can do a lot of things to try to make sure that team's happy. But you know, the watching, being able to watch metrics as well um, is, is super important. Absolutely. Um, and you don't want to make, you want to make sure you don't burn out any specific tech, right? Or any, right. anybody on your staff, yeah. um, you know, uh, the report Aaron was talking about on agreement profitability. It is again, one of my favorites. Um, it, you know, I, uh, was, um, a, a lot of time in most of my career, I was over, you know, what, what, what is the profitability? I was over finance. I was over account management. Where do our account managers need to focus, um, with our agreement profitability reports, uh, you can come in here, you can select out, you know, I just want to see certain types of agreements. Um, in here, you can see here's our main managed services agreements. You can click on the agreements. You can see trending for effective rates for those particular agreements. You can click in any particular customer and it's going to then give you a trend of the effective rate margin for that particular customer. Uh, but more importantly, you can go into it by month. So every single month you're able to go in and see your margin across your clients to see, you know, who, who did I lose money on? Who did I make money on? Um, if you did lose money on a client, being able to drill into that client to kind of figure out, sorry, this is going a little slow today. Um, uh, so now I'm just looking at those managed services agreements again. I can come in here, you know, do a sort by margin and quickly see, you know, what are my clients that I'm making margin on? And then which ones did I you know, not do so well. So here I've got some down here in this 30% mark. So I can tell, you know, I've billed, you know, I billed $2,600 of this client, but I actually put 51 hours of labor on that client that month. You know, what happened? What kind of labor was it? You can then do a drill. You can, you can actually click on them and well, let me go back down here to that. Uh, it's not going to do it for me. There we go. So it will sort the data down here too. So I can see now that I was doing okay. I had one week, one week that I, I blew it for that particular client. With our reporting, being able to know what that data is week over week before the month is over is, is super valuable. The other thing you can do is drill into it. So I could go down here and say, okay, what happened with those 30, those 39 hours? You know, what, 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 what was the cause? You can then drill into that ticket labor and then look at your tickets, look at all the tickets that went into that agreement and see, you know, was there one particular ticket that caused this issue? And now up here at the top, I can see I had 16 
labor hours on one ticket. And it was, and if I click on that ticket down here at the bottom, it's going to let me see from my type, subtype, and item, which I love good type, subtype, and item. And I can see here, this was an instant, it was a printer scanner, a scan fail. Well, at this point, we could have probably bought them a new printer um, for the amount of time right. like, that we spent <laughs> working on that of particular times, printer. I'm glad I picked this one. It was random. Uh, so. that, yeah, that, I love that you pick a printer <laughs> ticket for this. Yeah. And the number of times. It, it was totally on had. accident. I know you're probably thinking <laughs> yeah. that it was, it, I, I've looked for this one, no, but I actually didn't. I see this perfect. kind of stuff all the time. The number um, of times and, we spent like a day working or days working yeah. on a scan to email because Xerox wouldn't <laughs> get back to us or Canon. And I'm like, we could have bought a brand new one. For yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. funny. You could also go back into your ticket. So this is the way to kind of look at it from a month, you know, month standpoint. But then there's also margin review. I, I get a lot of clients. They'll say, well, I don't, I don't know where I need to focus. You know, where should I put my focus? You know, you can quickly go into your margin review look at it month over month, and then you've got your color code up here. So it's like, hey, I want everything to be kind of in this blue gray. This is sample data, so it's looking really good. <laughs> but what, what I usually see is a lot of blue gray, but then all of a sudden some peaks, or I'll see some blue gray, pink, blue, pink, pink, blue, and it's dipping, or those that just stay low, or those large clients that we were talking about earlier that are down here in this uh, super pink, uh, as I call it, and, and, and they're not coming out of it. So like, here's one where you've got a really good client and then all of a sudden you're losing money on them. Well, what was the reason for that? And again, you can just take this data and just drill into it quickly. So for, a, for an owner to be able to have this, it just touches of buttons. And again, it's Power BI. It takes a little bit to just kind of get around in it. But once you can figure out how to maneuver it and get around, it's, it's super easy to then come in here, drill through, and see anything that you need to see or tell your account manager, hey, I need you to focus on these particular clients. This, what's going on with them? Um, you know, type, subtype, and item. Um, I, 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 I do like to kind of brag on that report. It's probably when Aaron had me look at Cognition, um, it's the reporting that I was probably the most impressed with. <laughs> um, let me get back to that. I want to show that real quick. So we call it common real issues. While you're doing that, I have Dustin from Clear Guidance uh, ping me on my Discord uh, saying, <laughs> we built our own Power BI reporting from the ground up and still ended up switching to Cognition 360. <laughs> we yeah. should have we should have done it that way in the first place. Yeah, so, I, hear, I hear that a lot. Or praise. we've worked with people that we've built our own Power BI and they left. The, the person who was in charge of making it work is no longer here. So it no longer yeah. works because ConnectWise did an update. Um, this common issue report, this is the one that Aaron was kind of talking about where we can show you your ticket type, subtype, and item across all your clients, but also your cost. So this is where he was saying, you know, what what is printers? What is printer work costing me? You can click into printer, and then it's actually going to sort the data for you over here by customer. And you're going to be able to see, you know, who, who's the customer that this is costing me the most money for. Um, uh, password changes. I've actually seen one where I, I did this and I uh, there's a search ticket subject, which unfortunately it doesn't work for the demo, but you can actually freeform text anything. And I typed in printer and it was a cost of about $3,000 over about a three month time period. So I was like, yep, your help desk is busy, but you might could get rid of it with a 2FA project for that client. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's just Absolutely. some of the reports. Um, I know it's, one of the uh, other things, real quick, uh, on that topic. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of a, a, a surprise. Is that uh, what we hear a lot? Is well, my ticket type, subtype, and item is not that great, or my guys don't really use that that kind of stuff. So we've got uh, we've partnered with Microsoft's uh, AI platform to basically pull. Uh, we can go analyze the ticket and the you know, the notes that went into the ticket, including time entry of how it was actually solved. And it will categorize that with a type subtype and item for you. Um, it's, we're coming out with oh, that nice. this month, but it's, it's things like that where it's just like, Hey, I don't have, I don't want to spend all this time to make my data perfect. So what is the solution? You know, and then in this case, the AI can basically do it for you. Yeah. That, nice. uh, that, that hiring one that I was talking about, it's like, Hey, I need to hire for the help desk. You can just take your subtype information and pull it out into 
focus mode and then see here's all the types of tickets that I've worked on. This is, you can look at it over six months or hey, what did we work on last week? And now here's my type, subtype, and item for the last six months. So, you know, down here at the bottom, VMware, nine tickets. You know, it's like it's important to have that skill, I guess, but I need to make sure my guys know how to do these things if they're going to help out my team when I hire them on. I see you can also do a board. I, th I think there's some training that needs to go on there too. Yeah, exactly. So it's an opportunity <laughs> for training. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that too. Yeah. There's there's so much that you can get out of it. It's it's uh it's it's fun. Every time I get into data of somebody else, you know, sometimes uh, uh, we only have an hour in the first onboarding, and I'm like, oh, I wish I had a day because <laughs> we could we could do this forever. So we're pulling in data. Nice. Um, uh, most of what you see here is coming from ConnectWise Manage. Um, and as I was kind of saying before, there's uh, every other integration usually feeds data into ConnectWise Manage. Uh, but there's sometimes that there's still data that's going to sit outside and it's not feeding that data in. Um, so there's a couple of different uh, data sources that we connect to, things like Smileback, uh, Crew, things like that, where we can actually... Um, uh, kind of connect those dots and still, st uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Make those data points match and, and say, okay. Hey, if, if you're, if your guys are really good about putting time in for this customer, it's look at their CSAT and look at the, the difference in the quality of the notes that go in, how quickly they're, they're putting the time in. Does that affect CSAT and that kind of thing? So not just showing, you know, like a CSAT, you know, average for this customer, which is good to know, but like correlating right, right. that to like real, like what actually is moving the needle here? Um, that That's the real cool. magic, right? It's the amalgamation and correlation of the data between different disparate data sources, being able to say, okay, this relates to this, and this is how it gets from this point down to this point. You know, being able to do that is, is phenomenal. Um, real quick, because I know we're already short on time. Um, any other uh, PSAs now or in the future planned? So we've got Autotask um, on the roadmap for... Uh, we're really getting deep into it. Q1 of next year. Um, but that that's the next big one. And there's a couple others that are already in line. Um, and so we're, we're working on those as quickly as we can. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, and, uh, any, any, uh, what are the near term, any announcements coming up, uh, before uh before i let you guys go anything new so we've got an integration uh i told you about the ai thing we've got an integration with yep. line guard too so if you if you know much about nice. line guard line guard connects to eight million different data sources so in theory that was a quick quick win for or easy win for us meaning in terms of choosing who should we integrate with next because they're right. integrating with so many different people and if you know much about line guard like it's just gobs and heaps of data that they're pulling in and so we're we're just kind of scratching the surface of all the things that we could do with that data, um, but we're going to be announcing that integration this month, um, a little bit a nice. little bit down the road uh, towards a towards a holiday with them. Um, but that's kind of the main thing that we got going on this month. Awesome! And if people want to reach out, how do they reach you guys? Um, I think there's a there's a slide that's got contact information we can throw up on there. Um, but, uh, you can reach out directly to Christy or you, of course you can go to our website, cognition360.com. Um, and there's, you can sign up for a trial on the site right there. And then, uh, we, we, we do, we got, uh, you can email Christy directly, christy.perez at cognition360.com. If you want to, want to talk more. Awesome. And I got Carrie Wagner saying line guard does rock. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there's some accolades from the, uh, the OIT family, uh, Christy, Aaron, thank you so much for spending time with us. We appreciate you. Um, obviously this webinar is recorded, so you can see right away, right after the fact, I definitely encourage you guys to reach out to Christy, uh, and the cognition 360 team, cause it is phenomenal. Um, before we get going, Simon, what do we got coming up next, man? I know we got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, so we do have uh, a lot of events going on in December. Uh, the first thing that we want to bring up is right now we're participating. Uh, we're sponsoring the Everything MSP Christmas event. So if you guys want to join us for 25 days of giveaways, all you have to do is visit go.it.co slash MSP Christmas, and then you'll be entered into 25 days of giveaways. Uh, tomorrow, you're going to be uh, live from the Valiant Live podcast, Strategic Technology Trends uh, 2022. 
which you guys have uh, an awesome panel on there and Ray will be speaking on there. Uh, next week, we're going to be live at the ASCII Small Business IT Success Summit and Cup Party in Anaheim, California. Uh, that'll oh, nice. be on December 8th and December 9th. So if you guys are around, come meet us. Uh, and then we're also going to be doing the, the Tech Bar podcast live uh, from the ASCII Cup Party. Uh, the ASCII team uh, helped us set that up and we'll be, we'll be there um, for about an hour from 8 to 9 p.m. And then on December 14th, uh, we're going to be um, on the Road to Prosperity virtual event uh, presented by ID Agent. Ray is speaking on that panel, and they also have an awesome keynote um, as well. So make sure to register for that and make sure to join us for the for the Christmas event that's going on. I just got this. Uh, <laughs> I, I will leave this from an unnamed partner, but I got Christy is a genius at ops. Uh, she is one of those rare people. You can tell her five KPIs and she knows exactly what you need to do next. <laughs> so <laughs> pretty high, tr high praise. Uh, thank, thank you so much, guys. This is our everything MSP uh, giveaway. Tons of fun stuff. 25 days of giveaways. Pretty cool. Um, so, uh, you know, make sure you sign up and we'd love to send stuff out because, you know, we love giving away stuff. Uh, thank you to the OIT family for being part of this and uh, and riding uh, this journey with us for the past hour. Aaron, Christy, have a great rest of your week, guys. Have a good one. Gently. Bye. See you. Thanks, Ray. Thank you.